What's going on, guys? And welcome to Rabbits Use Cars. F your shoes, save your watch, kids. What's going on, guys? What's going on? You know, you got to laugh. You got to laugh at life and business and relationships. Because if you don't, you will snap and kill somebody. Totally, totally what will happen. Um, got to have a sense of humor. You know, you see the hot rods and you see the, you know, you see the fun stuff. You don't see the headaches. So I thought I would flip the script and just give you one week in the life of Rabbit. Narrated by Rabbit. So you got to think about it. You know, and I only work about three days a week, but I'm going to tell you, those three days can be kind of hellish. You know, we film twice a week now, so you don't miss out on any of the RUC action. You know, you got to think about it. I'm going to be gone for 16 weeks, so we had to have plenty in the can. So I got a little something to come back to when I come back. Got to keep you, got to keep you hooked. Got to get you fixed. The old rabbit habit. We got to feed it. Keep in mind, we sell collector cars. And with any business, there's always a certain level of bullshit. And this one's no different. Now, granted, we're a little laid back. We have a lot of fun. We have some interesting things happening in this building. Like I said before, if these walls could talk, just to fill you in on bullshit. And keep on, this is one week. This was last week for me. All right. So, I'll see in the background that good-looking OBS truck right there. Well, we built that truck. 5.3 LS Swap 4 L60 Dakota. Gauges, I mean, built special wheels, hammered, just beautiful. It's going to Corona, California. Great truck. I've owned that truck for three months. You know, we just been kind of crazy and shop was real kind of covered up. So anyway, we got it all done, lowered and all that stuff. That truck has never missed a beat. That is the best running vehicle. You just hit the switch and just, I mean, you got to think about LS power drive it anyway. Well, I'm talking to a man about that truck. Not the one that bought it, but I am talking to one. That, that, that wanted that truck. And he goes, and I'm sitting in my office. I sent him a text, said, hey, we need to get this car out, which never fails. The car that I need out is always going to be the one in the back of the building. So you got to move three or four to get one out. So that's one little headache. I said, hey, let's shuffle some cars around. Let's get that out. And so this was at the front of the building. He fires it up. And he shuts the door and locks the keys in it. Running. <sighs> I've been around car lots my entire life. And, you know, we don't keep extra keys. We don't have things like that. I don't put gas in them as a rule. To be honest with you, I don't feed them. They don't sit here very long. So they don't have a lot of fuel in them usually. You know, every once in a while I'll get one, I'll drive it, and, you know, I'll gas it up. But as a rule, it's just one of them expenses we don't have here because... I sell them. That's what I do. I don't feed them. We sell them. He's like, I can get in. I can get in. I'm like, stop. Called a buddy of mine. Came in. He unlocked it. Well, the only problem was, before he unlocked it, it ran out of gas. Right here in the building. Sitting dead in the water, right in the way. I always put a little gas in it. You let your fuel pump. Fire right up and go. Wrong. So he runs and puts some gas in it. This thing won't hit a lick. I come out here, sure enough. Call my guys at the shop. Hey, something's went south on this little LS truck. I don't know, fuel pump went out on it, you know, run it dry, whatever. Did you come by and check it out? They come by and check it out. So how much gas you put in it? And I said, well, it ain't even picked, it barely has picked the hand up. He said, well, maybe it don't have enough fuel in it. And keep in mind, my buddy's already gone now at this point. It's just me and Keith, my shop guy. He goes, let's put a little more gas in it. So we run, get five gallons of gas, put in it. It's only one problem. It's got a locking gas cap with no key. How he got the gas cap off of it, I don't know. We can't now. Of course, we can get him on the phone, figure out how he did it. So I had to play car lot you know, classic car lot hacks 101, jam a screwdriver in it, pop it, break it off, 
So now we have no gas cap, and I have a truck that don't run. We put gas in it, put more gas in it, same problem. Fuel pump's out. Fuel pump's in the tank. Truck's in the way. What do we have to do? We have to call a rollback. Come get the truck. Take the truck to the truck shop. We don't work on cars here. We sell cars here. So we put this perfectly running LS was on a rollback. Send it 10 minutes down the road. Put a fuel pump in it. Literally sold it the next day. One problem. Moving on. Shuffling cars around. You understand, these cars set, dead batteries. Just, that's part of, part of it here. It's just, the battery charger is the hardest working thing in this building. You know, I bought an $800 battery charger for a reason. That's some bitch so good, you could just roll it beside a car and it'll start up. It's just like a man on the clock. I love it. So, we got transport coming to pick up cars. And, you know, it's like, you know, you got to put battery chargers on. got to charge batteries up. Well, you know, sometimes batteries won't take a charge. So now you got to put a battery in because it's got like a dead cell or whatever or short in it, so it won't charge. So you got to go get a battery for it. Then, keep in mind, while in the middle we're doing all of this, and we have this truck with a gas can beside it and all this, my insurance guy comes in. Some of you are trying to run block well, we got gas cans, bear chargers, all this stuff running. You know, he's over here doing a safety survey, nosy. And they come in. So I'm over here, you know, running block while we're trying to get all this done. Finally get the truck fixed. Like I said, they got sold. We got the insurance guy out of here. We got all that done. Moving on. So I sold my 35th anniversary quarter. We got a video coming on it. Hang tight. Sold it. Same guy calls me up. He goes, Rob, this car won't hit a lick. Keep in mind, I work three days a week. I'm sitting here on my back porch, smoke cigarettes on the lake. I'm hanging out. This is my zen time. This is texting Miss Rabbit, smoke cigarettes, drink coffee on the back porch. That's what I like to do. That's what I enjoy to do. That's, that's, that's my... I like to look over the pool, looking out of the lake. That's what I like to look at. This car won't hit a lick. Actually, let me correct you. He said, this piece of shit won't hit a lick. First of all, don't call my car a piece of shit. It's my piece of shit. But you can't call it that. So what do I have to do? I have to get, get in the car and drive up here. That's an hour. We'll drive up here. So I've been trying to crank this car for over an hour. Won't hit a lick. But keep in mind, like I said, I've this car at 6,000 miles everywhere. Never missed a beat. All of a sudden, it don't start for you. I've been in car business a long time. Shit happens, I understand that. But cars just don't necessarily just break. So, I get here. Transporter's here. And of course, transporter wants to take a selfie with me since I walk up. I walk over and he's standing there, you know, with his thumb in his ass and his mind in Georgia. And I said, what's it doing? He said, it won't do anything. I said, maybe it's because you were called in names. I touched the roof of the car. You know me and trailer park Corvettes, close to my heart. I pulled the key out of the switch. 88 Corvette, got the little transponder key. I go, just give it a little love. Stick the key in the switch. Boom. I mean, it didn't even turn over once. He'd been trying to crank it for an hour. Daddy had to come in and resolve every problem in 15 seconds and took a selfie in that meantime. That's why I'm the boss. Car fired right up, backed it out, loaded up transport windows, New Old Massachusetts. And in the middle of all of this, I sold five cars in the process. So that was Monday, Tuesday filming, Wednesday Corvette fiasco. Monday was the fuel pump one. Thursday filming, filming, filming. Then you got Friday. I got to meet with my accountant, which is, we have a love-hate relationship. I love my accountant. I love Blake. Blake's a good guy. 
it's always a back and forth. And it always ends the same way the conversation does. I am way too pretty to go to jail. Just keep that in mind. Let me know what I got to pay. Bye now. A lot of people say, man, kind of rough week, you know. But it goes with it. And we had a lot of laughs that week, you know, and, and took a lot of selfies. And we took a lot, you know, we laughed, cut up, you grabbed, had some good lunch and all that stuff. You got to take the good with the bad in this. And I'll be honest with you, you know, this point in the week, it's Friday. And since we're talking about it now in the past tense, you know, I was actually going to close this with as long as that caddy, as long as that caddy fires up and insert perverted joke here, it'll all be good. But we already knew that already happened. Guys, we'll catch you next time at Rabbit's Used Cars. <sighs> Odd. It's hell look this good and feel this bad. <laughs>